One of the unique properties of chiral molecules is that they are optically active. I'm going to attempt to draw a picture of what it means for a molecule to be optically active. And I am definitely not a good artist, so bear with me. This is a regular light bulb. So it's like just a light bulb like you would use in your house, nothing fancy about it. And if we turn that light bulb on, it is going to emit light, visible light, and that light is going to be traveling in all different directions. The, the light will just be going sort of every which way. And if we pass that visible light through a filter, so this is going to be like a screen, you could even imagine like a piece of cardboard that has really small slits cut into it. And I'm drawing these, these slits being horizontal. So I'm just going to kind of fill in so you can see which parts of this are representing the filter and which parts of this are representing the slits. So we, we have this, um, this filter and we shine the light at this filter and the light heads in the direction of the filter and the light that is lined up with the slits in the filter are going to be able to pass right through. So they're going to be able to go through those slits, but the light that is not aligned with the slits in the filter will just be deflected. They'll be bouncing off. So only only light that is lined up with the filter, with the slits in the filter, will be able to pass through, through the other side. This is called a polarizing filter. Filter, not filler. So on the other end of this, all of our light is lined up. And of course, there's going to be light passing through every single possible opening. So even though on the left side of this drawing, I'm only showing one beam of light making it through. We're going to have a lot of beams of light coming through and it's all going to be lined up going in the same direction. Once we get all of our light lined up, we then pass that light through a sample of a particular molecule that we want to analyze. So this would be a sample of a molecule or maybe two different types of molecules in some sort of like this would be some sort of glass holder sample holder sample cell i'm not going to draw the molecules in here but they're just filled up inside of this sample holder and as the light comes in to this sample holder it is going to interact with the molecules that are inside the the sample holder if the molecules inside are chiral, they will actually cause that light to bend or turn at some sort of angle. That the angle is unique to the actual molecule itself. And it will come out the other side at whatever new direction it's headed. So I've got it turning quite a bit. Um, and so this is the light that has been rotated by the molecules inside the sample holder. And this right here, this process of rotating the light is what it means for a molecule to be optically active. So if a molecule inside of here is optically inactive, let's just do a little bit of erasing. If it's optically inactive, that light will not rotate and it'll just come out the other side, continuing to go in the same direction. So this would be the action of an optically inactive molecule. But if the light is op or the molecule is optically active, it's going to do this bending or turning of the light and reorient it, comes out the other side. And in the end, over here, we have some sort of detector that measures the direction of the light. So we are able to compare the final direction of the light to the initial direction of the light and we'll actually get a degree or an angle at which the molecule rotated the light. So this, as I said at the beginning of the video, this is a property of chiral molecules. 
Chiral molecules are optically active. Now, we're not talking about chiral carbons. We're talking about molecules that are overall chiral. Chiral molecules are optically active. Again, that just simply means that they are capable of rotating light. Achiral molecules are optically inactive, which means that they do not rotate light. And then we have a, a third possibility here. So um, it, it, one option is the molecules inside of the sample holder are just a single molecule that is chiral and we'll get the, the rotation of the light. Another option, which I drew, an achiral molecule where the light passes through without being rotated at all. Another option is that we put inside of our sample cell a mixture of enantiomers. So we have two chiral molecules that are enantiomers of each other, meaning that they're mirror images of each other. If we are using enantiomers, the enantiomers will rotate light because they're chiral. One enantiomer will rotate the light in one direction, and the other enantiomer will rotate the light in the opposite direction, which kind of makes sense because they're mirror images. So let's try to draw, let's try to draw what will happen if we're using enantiomers inside of our sample cell. So we will have one enantiomer rotating the light in this direction right here. So we get this rotation like that. The other enantiomer, instead of rotating the light this way, the other enantiomer will rotate the light in the opposite direction. And so when that happens, the light just gets straightened right back out again. And ultimately, the net is that there is no change to the angle of the light. One enantiomer rotates it in one direction and the other enantiomer rotates it in the opposite direction, both rotating by the same amount, just in two different directions. Enantiomers are optically inactive. As a whole, the individual molecules are optically active, but when we put them together, the net result is optically inactive. Now, this is only going to be the case if you have exactly 50% of one enantiomer and 50% of the other, so that exactly half of the molecules rotate the light this way, and the other half of the molecules rotate the light back in the opposite direction. If you have, let's say you have 75% of one enantiomer and only 25% of the other, some of the light will get rotated by one enantiomer and will not be rotated back. So enantiomers are optically active, but this is only true we have, when we have a 50-50 mixture of both enantiomer or each enantiomer. This 50-50 mixture, because it is so important to optically act, act, optical activity, this 50-50 mixture is called a racemic mixture. A racemic mixture is defined as a 50-50 mixture of two enantiomers. So if we have a racemic mixture of enantiomers, it will be optically inactive. If we have any other combination of enantiomers, like 4951 or 2080 or any other combination, that combination will be optically active. If we have a sample of pure chiral molecules of just one particular enantiomer, that will be optically active. And if we have an achiral molecule, that will be optically inactive.